Hey guys, um, so, I kind of wanted to do more of a serious vlog today, um, I apologize for the way I sound right now, I'm very nasally because my allergy slash, I'm pretty sure I'm coming down with something, has got in the way, so, I really, I really cannot breathe through my nose right now, um, I wanted to do this video because I have been seeing a lot of YouTubers do this um, particular video. Um, it's the coming out story, the ever popular coming out story. And as comfortable as I am with who I am now, this story still gets me every once in a while. And it's just, it's hard to talk about. And I think that's it's hard to talk about for a lot of people because it's revisiting a time in their lives that they went through something very difficult and something very, very, um, not really traumatic, but life-changing. Life yeah, there you go. So, um, I was unconventional. I didn't pull anyone aside. I didn't really do any of that. I, um, told everybody in my family at different times. Um, the first person I told was my sister's roommate, her college roommate, because I was getting to know her, and, you know, I'm like, you know what, I'm not going to see this person again, like, no one, she's not going to say anything. Plus, she had a couple of gay friends. So, I'm like, okay, yeah, you know what, I'll say something. So, I told her, and um, she was really cool. So, then my sister, obviously, was the next, the first family member to find out. And, um, you know, I, I didn't tell her in person, because deep down inside, I knew my family was going to be okay with it. I knew that they were going to accept me no matter what. But I was still very, very, very scared that, you know, maybe I was wrong. Maybe they wouldn't accept me for who I was. So, um, I told her on AIM. If anyone remembers that, I just aged myself. AIM? I don't know. Is that even still around? Um, I told her on AIM. And I just, I remember just, like, you know, kind of quickly typing it and then hitting send and, like, reclining in my chair. Like, because I was scared of the reaction, but I was also so relieved of the weight that had been lifted off me. And I waited, and she, she kind of just sat there and accepted it. And it helped that her roommate was there as well, because her roommate was like, okay, you know what, you, I knew this, your brother had told me, so I could keep an eye out for you, you know, so I can kind of hold your hand through this. And, um, I mean, I was in high school when I did this, uh, so... I remember the next day she called early in the morning, right before I was about to go to school, and my mom calls up to me, she's like, Matt, I'm like, oh, crap, and she's like, your sister's on the phone, and she's upset, I'm like, ah, oh, shit, everything just fell through, she didn't accept it the way I thought she would, and it's all gonna go to hell now, no, she called me crying, because, not that she didn't accept it, but she was so worried about me, and she's like, Matt, just be careful, and just take your time and know, and this is what stuck with me. She said, take your time and know who you're telling. Know that, know that you know, there are some people out there that aren't going to accept it, and then there are people out there who that are. But make sure that you're comfortable with yourself and comfortable with the fact that you are going to be telling someone you're gay. Um, because it is a life-changing experience. So, I, I calmed her down, I talked to her, and I'm like, yeah, you know what, I'll be fine, I'll be careful, I've dealt with this, you know, I'll be safe. 
And that's all she really wanted to hear. So, she was the first one to know. She knew about a year, for a year, before I thought to even tell my parents. And then, like the little, you know, like the worrier that I was, I was still very terrified. So, um, in school, we had this, uh, the choir, the orchestra, and the band had a chance to go to New York for a music trip. And so, I'm like, ding, perfect opportunity to tell my parents. Well, I was thousands of miles, thousands of miles away, so they couldn't really do anything. Um, and, you know, uh, everyone gets scared. And But this is a different fear that only, it's really hard to explain. But when you're going through it, you know it. It's a fear that's like, even though you know there are two paths, and one of them is more likely, the other one still is just as strong of an option that, that could happen. And that fear, that pain, that agony that you feel when you're trying to, you know, say this big cha life-changing thing... It, it makes itself prominent. It makes itself known. And it, it, it just... It throws you into that panic. And it, it did for me. And, you know, I, I give props to whoever can actually say this in front of their parents. In front of them. And just be like, you know what? I have something to tell you. That takes a lot more courage than anything. And I give anybody who does that props. They get so much respect from me. So, what I did was I wrote a three-page, three-page, front and back, notebook-papered letter sitting there saying, um, yeah, I'm pretty much gay, I'm sorry, I, this is who I am, and then I went to New York. On the way there, my friend was sitting next to me, she's like, don't worry, your mom loves you, she's going to accept you. And she did. She called me up. She's like, you know what? I accept you. I love you no matter what. There's nothing in this world that's ever going to change. And then, um, sorry, my dog's barking. If you want to quick see her, that's the fluffiness that is my dog. Emma! Yeah, she's on the couch. Um, so she's just doing her own thing. Um, but then my mom's like, let's not tell your dad. And I'm like, okay, why not? I want him to know as well. And she's like, he can't handle this right now. He's He's got a lot on his plate. Which, when she was telling me this, I don't think she understood how freaked out it made me. But she's like, you know, I'm sure he would be okay with it. He just can't handle this right now. Um, and then she let it known that my uncle is actually gay. And I'm just like, shit, you know, I, I have another gay person in the family. Um, though I've never talked to him about it, but I don't really get along with him that well. He's kind of a butthole. But, you know, it still, it gave that comforting feeling that I had someone else there. Then college came around, all right? And then, you know, this was when I felt more comfortable, even more comfortable with who I was than I uh, was than I am, you know, than I was back then. And, you know, you're around new people, and you're around more accepting of people. Accepting people, yeah, I, I think. Um, and, you know, that's when I kind of was just like, okay, this is who I am. I am a gay man. I am a gay... I'm a gay guy, and I, I I fall for other men, and I find them attractive. You know, this was all going through my head. And it helped because I'm, I am. I got a fiction writing degree at Columbia College. And during that time, we wrote different stories, and I was finding that my characters were starting to become more and more gay, and um, that they were dealing with the issues that I was dealing with. And so I'm like, oh, you know what? This is kind of cool. 
but I can't edit for shit. Like, my, my writing is fantastic. My grammar sucks like no other. So, that's how kind of I told my dad. We had an assignment to write kind of, um, I forgot what they were called. Oh, instances. And it had to do with our lives. It got us to tap into that vulnerable side, that out-of-the-box side as a writer. And so, one of those instances was me telling my mom. And my dad was reading it, and I called him up and I, I'm like, look, uh, can you look at my paper um, and correct it just so you know that... Um, you know, it's going to be talking about something very important. And I, uh, and I, I guess I kind of told him in person, but it wasn't in person. It was on the phone and I couldn't get it out. I literally had a lock in my throat and I'm just like, you know, I just, I want you to understand. And I kind of started beating around the bush and started saying a bunch of other stuff and like. He just stopped me, and he's like, I understand, and I know. I've known for a while. Because, you know, I wanted him to know. So I was leaving little hints, like, you know, articles about the gay games that happened here in Chicago, and we've always been goofy, and we always tell jokes, and, you know, every father-son relationship kind of has that weird, like, you know goofiness to it, you know, because fathers and sons try to connect, but they don't do it very well. Fathers and daughters, you know, that's their little girl, and that's their baby girl, and ma mothers are just like, I'll kill anyone who kill like hurts my son, you know, that kind of shit. Um, and me and my dad kind of just were connecting, we finally connected on that serious level. And stuff he does. Um, but that was the good thing. And knowing that he, um, knowing that he just wanted me to be who I was just made me feel so much better. And that final weight just lifted off. And I mean, of course my grandma still doesn't know, but, you know, that'll kill her. And I don't really want to do that. She doesn't need to know. The most important people know. The most important people in my lives know. Um. Uh. And, oh, fuck. And, you know, again, I give props to whoever can come out to their parents face-to-face. That is the most terrifying and heartbreaking experience that you have to go through. And when they do accept you, it's so much weight lifted off of you. But then, on the other hand, some parents don't. Some parents will throw their kids out. And it's it's heartbreaking because it's like, you gave birth to this life. How can you just disown it, even for who they are? And... I don't think any parent should ever do that because it doesn't matter what the Bible says. It doesn't matter what, you know, the church says or other people say or bigots or whatever. This is your child. You carried this person around for nine months in your body. You grew, the, you grew them in you. And you, you gave birth to them and raised them to a point. And then they finally come to terms with who they really are, and you are so disgusted that you have to throw your them out of the house that's not right, which is why I am so grateful for the parents that I have, so grateful for the ha family that I have. Oh my god, she fell asleep. Mm -hmm. I don't know, can you guys see this? She fell asleep. Oh, no, that's my knee. Oh. Sorry. I'm trying to put a desk together for my mom. Um, for her classroom. Uh, and then I was just like, hey, nobody's home. I'm going to do this vlog because, you know, it's still a little weird walking around with the camera, even though my camera is my phone. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm so grateful for the, the life that I've had. And I want 
this to, you know, be there for other people. And, you know, you have different things like the It Gets Better campaign or Who Gives a Damn campaign. Sorry, what the fuck? My dad's iPad is going gray gray. Um, you have different campaigns. The Trevor Project, the Who Gives a Damn campaign on YouTube. It gets better, um, on YouTube. Um, God, what was that other one? The Proud to Love? You know, and it, I know the Proud to Love one isn't just, you know, for gay people. It's for everyone, you know, that says, you know, I'm proud to love, you know, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. It's just to give you more effort to know, uh, uh, more material to know that you're not alone in this. And that there is always someone out there and um, to listen to and to, to, to let you know that, you know... It does get better. It, of course, it doesn't get better right away. There are r ups and downs like every day in life. But if you've got at least one person who believes in you and who loves you the most in your corner, then you know what? Then it did get better. It got better and it got it got fabulous. Because you know what? It doesn't matter if you're gay, straight, black, white, Chinese, whatever. I really shouldn't have said Chinese. I probably should have said Asian. Whatever. You're fabulous the way you are. And and I want everyone to know that. Um, I, I know a lot of YouTubers do this. I'm still not very comfortable with doing this. But, you know, if you feel like you're in trouble... I, I read through my comments. If you feel like you're in trouble and you need someone to talk to or give you advice or even listen to you or kind of point you in the right direction... Let me know that you want my email address, and I will give it to you, and you can use it to, you know, just email me any problems you have, and especially if they're this type of problem, that you just don't know how to come out to your parents, or if it's the right time, you know, it's, it's different for everyone, but I can at least try to point you in the right direction of where to go, or who to ask, or even just listen to your problems, and just be there for you, because, you know, I didn't have anyone there for me, I, I went through this by myself, and when I was going through this, not that many YouTubers were coming out making videos, like, oh my god, I'm so gay, you know, all this kind of stuff, new, nowadays, any, they have it a little bit, e you guys have it a little bit easier to just come out and see how everyone else did it. But, yeah, so just message me that you want my email address because you have a question, you have a concern, you just need advice, whatever, and I'll give it to you. Um, otherwise, you know the drill, comment, subscribe, like, and I'll see you guys later. Sayonara.